All right, we're in full off-season mode for LSU football. The Tigers now recruiting, adding to the coaching staff, everything we, with the intention of preparing for next season. And the news continues to drop day after day at this time of year. Who's playing in the All-Star games like the Reese Senior Bowl, things like that. Who's going pro? And today, we had another big announcement that's really going to cripple this team, I think, next season. Mason Smith, defensive tackle, would have been entering his third or fourth season with LSU next year, I think fourth, is going pro. And that's a decision that I did not see coming this offseason. Because, remember, he had the knee injury two seasons ago now and missed pretty much the entirety of the season after the first game against Florida State. Came back this past year, was pretty good, right? He played in most of the games, made some impact plays, made some plays that didn't show up really on the highlight reels and you won't really notice as a defensive tackle. He had a pretty good year, but I think he was going to come back and do one more season to boost his draft stock and to prove to everybody that he's come back from that knee injury and should be a top two round, maybe top three round pick kind of thing. But that's not what he wants to do. So he was a former five-star, a big recruit for this team. And if you ask me, he kind of leaves with underwhelming results based on the expectations and what we thought that Mason Smith would accomplish at LSU. So he's gone, and that prompts the question, who the heck is playing defensive line for LSU next year? That's a massive problem at this point because, look, Michigan just won the national championship, right? And say what you want about the sign stealing, about the off the field violations, whatever, whatever. As far as the on field product goes, one of the biggest reasons why this Michigan team improved so much and ended up getting to the top of the mountain is the improvements they made at defensive line. They had two defensive tackles that could rush the passer, get off blocks, stop the run. They had defensive ends that could get around the edge, stunt, blitz, make tackles against the run, but also make plays in the pass rush, get sacks, CFLs, whatnot. That was massive in this team winning the national championship, and I think any football team that wants to win a national title has to be very stout on the offensive line and very, very strong on the defensive line. Offensive line with LSU is taken care of. We know what to expect there. They got four starters coming back next year. This group was a finalist for the Joe Moore Award. They probably should have won it because Washington did not look like the Joe Moore Award winning offensive line we thought they were. So they're good there. They've got guys back. They got pieces. We know, we know what we're going to get, right? Defensive line, no idea. Most of these guys are going pro. Most of them are in the transfer portal. And so the guys that are coming back, Jacoby and Guillory being one of them, we'll get into that. He, he's played, but then there's two others that have barely played. So, yeah, the cupboard is kind of dry at that position. And it's a very important position in terms of accomplishing things like the SEC title, SEC West Championship, National Championship, right? What helps? This just dropped recently. Bo Davis coming back to LSU as the defensive line coach in Blake Baker's defense. This guy is synonymous with LSU football, played here in the 90s, won a national championship as a member of the strength and conditioning staff in 2003. Then he went to Alabama, was a coaching uh, a coach on two different national championship teams, 2009-2015 with the Crimson Tide. Then he spent some time with the Lions in the NFL, and most recently was at Texas, a team that just made the college football playoff had an All-American defensive tackle in Tavondre Sweat. He's a star. He's going to be a pretty high pick in the NFL draft. And they had Byron Murphy, who is the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. And that's also a Texas run defense that allowed 80 yards per game this year. Those are the kind of numbers we want to see at LSU. So that's a great hire. He's known for his recruiting. He's known for his development. He's coached 17 All-Conference players, seven All-Americans. And this is the guy I think LSU most needs right now. Because there's nobody coming back, really, at defensive line next year. They've recruited a couple guys that might make instant impacts. There are players in the transfer portal that have already left LSU they could convince to come back. But it's late in the game right now. The early entry portal kind of session, whatever you want to call it, is over. The portal is closed for a little while. And anybody that's really worth much of anything has already picked a new destination in the transfer portal, a defensive line. The time for that was... Late November, early December, and we're well past those dates. So who's gone, who's back, why are we in this position? Makai Wingo, an All-American, also had an injury-riddled season this past year. Missed a couple of games, Alabama, the remainder of that regular season. Did play in the bowl game, though. 
I thought he might come back. He also declared for the NFL draft. Maybe because of Madhouse. Maybe because of other factors. He's certainly a good player. He's a preseason All-American, so he definitely has the skill set to play pro. I thought he could use one more year, especially with that injury. But he's gone for now. Mason Smith, as I just said, he's going pro. Jordan Jefferson, I think he used all of his eligibility. The transfer from West Virginia, who took over for Wingo at D-Tackle. Great, great player, big body. Like, did some good things in there. That's another loss. So, can you convince Wingo to come back? Maybe. Can you convince Smith to come back? I don't know, because Wingo declared before Blake Baker was hired, before this defense was, you know, clean house, right? Smith just went pro. And Baker was announced as the D.C. a couple days ago. So it seems like that didn't have really any impact on his decision. Now, does Bo Davis make a difference here? Possibly. So who's coming back? Jacoby and Guillory, who is a rotational piece, has played a little bit. Redshirt junior right now. He's got one more season, it seems like. He came in, he played some snaps this year. He's pretty good. So that's, that's you know, a good player to have back. Someone that's played decent amount of snaps, started, that kind of thing. Jalen Lee, a rising senior, I guess he'd be. He's a junior right now. Transfer from Florida. Started four games with the Gators. 19 tackles and a sack in like three seasons of work. But this year played in just a handful of games and had two tackles. So he wasn't really much of a factor. But he's got the good frame to play defensive tackle. 6'3", 308. Preston Hickey, he's back. He's a redshirt freshman right now. 6'1", 300. Transferred in from Oklahoma State. But played in two games this year with no tackles. Army... And Grambling State. So you've got a guy that was a depth piece and two players, I guess two depth pieces, and then, you know, one other guy that has barely played and only got in for the blowout games. So not inspiring much confidence. You don't need to be a star to play D-tackle, but it certainly helps if you are. Like the teams that can get interior pressure and also stop the run from their defensive tackles are some of the best teams, hence Michigan. So who's coming in next year? 2024 recruits, commits. You got Sean Washington, Juco transfer from Eastern Mississippi, East Mississippi Community College, EMCC, was on Last Chance U, one of the best Juco football programs out there. 6'3", 297, 26 tackles in a sack this past season. Offers from Arkansas, Mississippi State, SMU. So a lot of people wanted him. And he started his career in Georgia. So he was a three-star kind of guy from New Orleans, actually. Played at John Errett, also Warren Easton. Got a good skill set, enough for Georgia to give him an offer as just a three-star, and they've developed D-tackle very well there. But when he was at Georgia for that one year, he only played in one game. Now, it's tough to crack the lineup as a freshman there in your first two seasons, but just putting that out there. So, you know, that's a good pickup from the Juco ranks, but, you know, is a Juco guy ready to step in and play SEC ball and key, stab, key snaps as a starter in just his first year? Question. Demiree and Johnson... Apologies if I butchered that name. From Westgate High School in New Iberia, 6'2", 275, three-star, Alabama, Auburn, Miami, and Florida were after him. He seems more like a two- or three-year project kind of guy. I think he's got to put on a little bit more size, so I wouldn't say he's a quick answer. How about Dominic McKinley, the guy that committed to LSU and flipped from Texas A&M on New Year's Day? He was a five-star, top six defensive lineman in the country, 6'5 and a half height, 280 weights, so kind of got a college-ready body. The sentiment seems to be that he needs a little bit of time before he is relied upon as a starting defensive tackle. Under Armour All-American, so certainly has the pedigree, certainly seems to have the future to be that guy, but is he ready in his first year of college? That's a lot of pressure to put on him. We don't know. Who's in the transfer portal? Ty G. Hill transferred to Oregon State. He was 6'3", 288. That was a tough loss. Fitzgerald West, a former three-star. He's in the portal right now, 6'3", 285. So these are pretty, you know, guys with good frames, with, with good futures at the defensive line position that you've lost, at least for now. Quincy Wiggins, he's committed to Colorado, a four-star recruit out of high school, highly sought after in the transfer portal. You got Bryce Langston in the portal as well. He was a four-star recruit. So you can't sustain these kind of losses. You, you recruit these guys like two or three per year, to keep that cycle rolling and have names and guys stacked up so you can sustain these kinds of losses. And right now, you don't. So the question is, can you go back to the transfer portal with these new hires, Blake Baker, Bo Davis? Can you bring Fitzgerald West back? Can you possibly get Bryce Langston back? I'm not sure if Hill and Wiggins are super firm to their commitments. Hill to Oregon State, 
Wiggins to Colorado, can you convince them to come back? Hey, you could be a starter right now here. Can you do that? That's something they might look into. I think the last point I'll make here, the edges are fine. You need good D linemen on the interior and the exterior. They've got good outside guys. Ovi Ogufu, the transfer from Texas, who played this year. I think he has one more year of eligibility. Deshaun Womack, the five-star freshman who played well in the bowl game, got better down the stretch. He's back. He should have a breakout year. The hype should be building on him. Savion Jones, Braden Swinson, Paris Shand. These guys all showed flashes last year. They were dependable at defensive end. So you're good on the outside, but you got to have the D tackles. You got to have the nose guards. You got to have the big bodies that can stuff the run. And also have those guys on the outside that can help with that, but also get pressure on the quarterback. I think having a defensive line and a good position coach is crucial to doing much of anything of relevance in the national landscape. Winning a national title, being a top 10 team, winning the SEC. So that's a big problem right now. This is early January. You got time to fix it, but the avenues, there aren't many. I think you checked the big box by hiring Blake Baker. I think he's an up-and-coming guy at D.C. It was a great hire. And Bo Davis bringing him back, that's an excellent hire. I give that an A+. Now you've got to give Davis and Blaker people to work with because right now the bodies are few and far between. The proven commodities, few and far between. So you've got to bring more to Baton Rouge and build up that position group because right now you are in big, big trouble in the future.